In this video, I'm going to be going over why the stock market could have potentially already bottomed and why it may make new all time highs within 2022. I'll also go over the relationship between the stock market and Bitcoin and what we can expect for Bitcoin in the next year. So I don't cover too much about the stock market in my videos. I probably should and probably will. Uh, if I do talk about it, it's mostly within my Patreon group link down below. But what we understand about the stock market is that anytime the market is down 20%, that is a technical technical bear market. If we take a look at the S&P 500 from its all time high, we corrected around 24%. So that's technically a bear market. And the Nasdaq from its previous all time high corrected around 34%. The Dow Jones from its previous all time high technically did not correct 20%. We're talking about 19.7% pretty close, but most people follow the S&P 500 and it does a great job following the US stock market. So if a 20% or more correction is considered a bear market, then what would be considered a bull market? Well, there are three technical things that need to happen within the stock market to be considered a bull market. The first one is that the market has to retrace at least 50% from its previous all time high to the market low. As you can see, this is the 0.5 level, meaning that the market has retraced 50%. And right now we are technically above it. The second indicator is the 200 day moving average. The market has to be above this red line over here. Unfortunately, the S&P 500 is not above it. And the third thing we want to see is a 20% recovery from its previous low. So if a 20% correction is a bear market, then a 20% rally is considered a bull market. Unfortunately, uh, the S&P 500 has only rallied up close to 19%. So we are technically not in a bull market when it comes to the S&P 500. On the other hand, if we take a look at the Nasdaq, the Nasdaq is actually above its 200 day moving average from its previous low to its all time or this high over here, it's recovered around 30 38% and the Nasdaq has also retraced 50% from its low you can see right over here for the Dow Jones, although it technically never entered a bear market, it's above its 50% retracement level, and it is above the 200 day moving average. So technically, the Nasdaq is in a bull market. But the question is, is it sustainable? And how high will it go? And will the S&P 500 eventually catch up break above the 200 day moving average and continue higher? Well, although nobody has the answer to the future, and unfortunately, I don't, I do believe that the Nasdaq will most likely chop around in this area for about next two months, probably until October and rally up stronger towards the end of the year when it comes to the midterm elections. We'll probably see the same thing happen within the S&P 500, whether it rallies up and kind of consolidates for the next two months and resumes higher. You know, the Nasdaq is considered more of a risk on sector. And but the question is, if the Nasdaq is only, you know, about 10% away from its previous all time high, how come Bitcoin is still down 67% from its previous all time high? Well, that's what I want to talk about and help you manage expectations within the next year. Well, if you take a look at the markets from 2018 to 2019, the relationship between the S&P 500 and Bitcoin was really interesting. Why? Because the S&P 500 eventually corrected 20%. That was technically a bear market, but it rallied higher, eventually met the 200 day moving average, got back above it and made new all time highs, consolidated, rallied up higher. And then we had the March 2020 crash. Now during that entire year, guess what happened with Bitcoin? Well, after it capitulated the same time the S&P 500 did, it pretty much just stayed down there in a very extreme bear market. When the S&P 500 made new all time high over here, Bitcoin rallied up to here. And this is where kind of a decoupling happened where the S&P 500 while it rallied higher, Bitcoin was pretty much in a down trend. So I think something similar will happen within traditional markets as well, where the S&P 500 will probably chop around uh, for the month of October and September, just because historically those two months have been bearish months. Uh, but when you take a look at uh, November and December, usually the stock market rallies higher. So most likely a new all time high within 2022. During that entire time, what do I think will happen with Bitcoin? Well, I think it's probably just going to be down in these ranges anywhere between uh, $18,000, maybe we'll rally up to $30,000 but chop sideways. Well, if that's the case, then isn't it better to be in stocks right now rather than Bitcoin? Well, you could probably do that. But one thing you have to understand is that the percentage gains uh, within Bitcoin or crypto in general are generally or will outpace traditional markets. For example, from this low over here to its new all time high that rallied up around 25% in that exact same time from this market bottom low, Bitcoin rallied up 72%. So yes, psychologically, the stock market is making 
making new all-time highs. It's rallying. Everything looks bullish. But why isn't the crypto market doing anything? But if you look at the percentages, 72% is pretty awesome. At the same time, from this all-time high to this all-time high, that was about a 14% gain. And during that exact same time frame, from over here to this time over here when the S&P 500 made a new all-time high, that was an 89% gain. Yes, Bitcoin is a lot more choppy and a lot more volatile, so it'll definitely mess with your emotions. Whereas the S&P 500, it's pretty steady, right? It's a pretty steady pace, but would you rather get a 14% gain or a 89% gain back? in 2018 to 2019 and 2020. Same thing within the S&P 500. If you grab it from the low to its current price, it's rallied up 17%. If we measure it from the peak, 18%. If we get Bitcoin's low, the 17.5K range, to the current price, it rallied up 23%. So even after this pullback that Bitcoin is experiencing right now, it is technically rallied a lot higher than the S&P 500 when it comes to percentage, as high as 41%. So there are two things that I'm doing. Number one, it is to dollar cost average into Bitcoin every single day, regularly, without thinking about the price. Second is that I do have some stocks within my Webull account. I am actually down on some of my positions, for example, on Coinbase, Arc, Square, Meta, or Facebook, I am down. I have a very small Bitcoin position with my Webull account just to kind of test it out. And thankfully, my Apple and Tesla positions have recovered and I'm finally back in the greens. If you're interested in signing up for Webull, I do have a link down below. If you do use my link, you can get up to 12 free stocks valued up to $30,000. You'll most likely not get the full $30,000, but you can create an account, deposit $1, get your 12 free stocks, sell it all, move all the money back into your bank. It's pretty much free money. But what I'll most likely do is sell my Apple and Tesla positions within my Webull account and purchase Bitcoin. Now, I don't know if you guys knew this, but you can actually transfer crypto from your Webull account into a crypto wallet. For example, I have some Bitcoin in my Webull account. I'm going to go ahead and click on transfer. You can choose to receive crypto into Webull or send crypto from Webull. I'm going to send crypto out. So send crypto out from Webull. And right now, these are the only three cryptocurrencies you can send in and out of. I'm going to choose Bitcoin. There is a limit to how much Bitcoin you can send out daily. But for right now, I'm going to choose the max amount, which is very little. Uh, I'm going to choose 0 0.003. Paste a Bitcoin wallet address. Click on continue. Confirm all the information. There is going to be a network fee, which is pretty standard when it comes to sending crypto. 82 cents. Confirm. And now I've successfully transferred crypto from my Webull, which is a stock account, into a crypto wallet. On the shorter time frame, Bitcoin has broken down from this ascending wedge got rejected right over here going down broke below its 200 week moving average which i actually did expect again i do expect a lot of choppy action price target is down here at 20.7k if you wanted to extend the wedge out and consider this the bottom of the wedge uh then we're definitely going to be expecting a lot lower price level somewhere around 19.2k i think a great area to look out for uh is going to be the 0.618 at 20.5k which is close to the bottom of the wedge all the way down to the 0.786 so this range over here will be a great time to buy you could probably set you know buy orders at the these levels but there are two support levels I do want to stress and kind of uh, have you guys aware about this is going to be the first trend line always note that diagonal trend lines are much more powerful than horizontal trend lines this diagonal goes from the uh, you know April 17 or April 2021 all-time high kind of connects support and resistance we have support over here so if we continue downwards this is where the 14k prediction came in uh, in my previous videos we could probably hit lower to 12 12 to 13k. Uh, I hope that Bitcoin doesn't hit those levels, but always you know be aware that it is a possibility. And from the 69k top, if we grab support and resistance and pull that down all the way over here, the worst case scenario will be probably down at these levels at ten thousand dollars, all the way down to nine thousand uh, dollars. I would imagine that, that would be uh, horrific. Uh, that means that the S&P 500, Nasdaq, all you know traditional stock markets will make new lows. And what we just experienced right now is a small little relief rally within a larger bear market. I did make a video on why I believe that this right over here, the 17K range was the bottom, but we're going to have to wait and see, and I'll try to keep you guys updated as much as possible. Well, with that said, I hope you all enjoyed this video. If you did, please give it a big thumbs up. If you have any questions or comments, leave it down below, and I'll see you guys in the next video over. Good night, good morning, adios.